Hello and welcome to the Dancers Podcast. Or I already do that. Hello, you are about to listen to the Dancers Podcast. I just have a couple announcements, so hang tight here. We are going to Toledo, Ohio on January 12th, Cleveland, Ohio, January 19th, the Hollywood Improv on January 25th, Wise Guys Las Vegas on February 2nd and 3rd, and Wise Guys Downtown Salt Lake City on February 4th. So grab tickets to that. Please join the Patreon just for $5 a month. You get the extended version of the episodes where me and Terrence get a little bit more silly. Mm-hmm. And Terrence, anything you want to plug? Um, for those out there, I'm working on my Facebook comedy page. Um, yeah, working on it. Look out for it. Yep, Terrence is getting on Facebook. It's just 25 years late. But hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Stuff gets in the way. Right. <laughs> We're just going to keep moving forward. Enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the Dancers Podcast. I am your host, Daniel Donahue. And this is Terrence Pennington. And you may be wondering, Daniel, why are you speaking in a tone so low and austere? Mm -hmm. Well, I will tell you is because I'm about to impart onto you the knowledge, the secret, the underlying laws of the universe, the law of attraction. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Terrence, you still have stuff on your nose. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> We're going to keep rolling. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, how is everyone? You are uh, listening to the Dancers Podcast, the podcast where we delve into all things self-help, mm-hmm. the good, the bad, the vaguely mentally ill. The weird, the Lovecraftian. The lo- <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this one is no different. Um, we are going to talk about the law of of attraction before we get into that terrence have you done anything this week to improve yourself i actually have yeah go ahead i cleaned my room that's great did you actually you were there yesterday you kind of so so you you're kind of doing uh sort of in jordan peterson style you yeah, 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 you're basically. Trying to, you're trying to beat the bloody demons. I am. Dude. You're and trying it, to destroy the bloody demons. Trying to swallow. What did is, what is he say? He has a thing about swallowing, getting yeah, swallowed the, by the, the whale. whale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. swallowed by the motherfucking whale. That's right. I'm snug. <laughs> <laughs> you're curled up in that motherfucking whale. Oh, yeah. We ain't coming out. That's good. And it feel, felt good to clean your room? It really is. It's honestly great. It's getting dirty now, but it's the holiday season, yeah. so... The house is gonna get trash. I have I I was describing your apartment, uh, and I did say it is one of the most deterrent places for the opposite sex that I could ever imagine. It is a little bit better now than it was before. Yeah. That is not saying much. Yeah, yeah. Our friend Killian yeah. has a lady, so he's yelling at me a lot. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say for men out there, a huge uh, self improvement method is. Getting a girlfriend who compels you to uh, put your life together. That's really true. <laughs> that, that is true. And it's maybe not the best. And a great self-help method for women is stay as far away from those men as possible. But No, no don't say that. <laughs> don't say all that. Think. Don't say all that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've actually, you know what I've been doing, dude? Mm-hmm. I've been relaxing. I've been sharpening the axe. You know that one from the... Uh, what is it like? The five rules of power, or whatever. No, not the law, rules. Not the laws of no. Uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. Okay, gotcha. All of these books do sort of uh, enter your mind in a swill. You know what I mean? Like okay. it all kind of mashes together because they are all saying kind of the same thing. But Abs- absolutely. And the seven habit, seven habits of highly effective people. One of them is sharpening your axe, and the analogy is when you, uh, if you're trying to cut down a tree. Why chop for thirty minutes when you can sharpen it for five and cut for five? You know what I mean? No. So I've been sharpening my axe. <laughs> no. I, it is kind of convoluted, but it means like when you rest mm. or or whatever, sharpening the axe for me, my brain, it's kind of giving my brain a little bit of rest and relaxation. Mm. Uh, I will come back stronger, which has honestly never really worked for me. I've I've always come after a long period of rest. I always come back to stand up much weaker and it takes me a long time to kind of get back on the ball. And yeah, I think yeah. that's because stand up is not actually work. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what's holding me back is the fact that my job isn't real and it's not actually work. And mm. after a show, everyone in the audience should come up to me and kick me in the balls because I'm so like uh, mm. privileged to do it. It's real to me. Hey, yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. No problem, dude. Um, <laughs> now let's get into the topic. We're talking about the law of attraction. Many listeners right now may uh, have a vague understanding of what the law of attraction is. And the reason why is it is a very Mm -hmm. easy-to-explain situation. And and, uh, so easy to explain that even in 
essentially the only text, which we will get into the secret, that specifically and primarily targets the law of attraction. Well, there's been many texts on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The most well-known finds itself repeating over and over and over again and also yeah. needs to pad the book with like many many quotes the oh, yeah. the book i actually read before that which i wanted to talk about before was uh napoleon hill's book uh think and grow rich which my mom who comes up a lot because she was a, a motivational speaker mm-hmm. and i would go with her to motivational speaking events mm-hmm. she tried uh getting me to re- and i did actually and i took very extensive notes on think and grow rich i'm not this is oh. what I, what age were you let me tell you a story about that real quick. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm eight years old. I just got there was a SpongeBob game <laughs> where you catch jellyfish. I there was like a, a, a handheld like, and I, I brought it because my mom had a speaking engagement. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have my little SpongeBob jellyfish catching game. And before my mom goes up, it's very much like stand-up comedy where there's like a lower level, which my mom was at at that time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, before she goes up, there was a. I forget his name. I forget what exactly he was even talking about. But he was a Jamaican man who had moved to America. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget this because it was so stark and so funny. He goes up to the podium and he's doing the part of any motivational speaker's job, which is to let you know, like, how bad and hard his life was. Uh, And a lot of those people do legitimately have very bad and hard lives. But it becomes very procedural. Yeah. When yeah, you, yeah. it's like if you're watching five motivational speakers, it's like, okay, yeah, yes, you it, horror, you were brought into yeah. a basement and kicked with a boot, and like that's why you're right, you're, right. Um, Malnourished, all that. And he was, Brilliant. he was, he came to the podium and he goes, um, he goes, when I was a kid, I got a new pair of shoes, and uh, and they were so. Uh, they were so bad, like the rubber was so poorly formed that I stepped on a nail and the nail went all the way up and through my foot. Mm-hmm. And when I went home, my dad looked at my shoe and looked at my foot and beat me because I had ruined my new shoe. <laughs> and then he just moves on. Like there's no moral to the story. Like yeah. he thought motivational speaking was just talking about getting beat. As a kid. <laughs> there, was no, there was no yeah. overarching theme to his speech. I could do that, man. <laughs> I could be like, yeah, I got robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> it was, it was so funny. Like, I, I remember his only talking points were getting beat as a kid, and that Jamaica yeah. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Those were his only. That was his. Like, if he wrote a, a self help book, it would just be called Jamaica is crazy. Jamaican me crazy. Come on, you didn't. Come on, you didn't. You didn't think of that. Jamaican me crazy. I didn't think of that. Kingston. I'm not a, as a deaf day writer as you are. <laughs> Um, Kingston Beauty of Mon- Okay, I'm done. So I read, uh, I read Think and Grow Rich, and mm. um, go ahead and uh, hit a quote one because I want to talk a bit about uh, no up quote a. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Napoleon Hill. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right. So quote a here. It is sometime in 1908 that Hill claimed his pivotal conversation with Andrew Carnegie happened. However, there is no record of the two meeting, and he spent much of the year on the run from authorities. Gizmo, Gizmodo, I'm sorry, has called Hill the most famous con man you've never heard of. Yeah, so I well, I, I don't think that that's necessarily true because I think a lot of people have heard of him. But there was this, uh, I believe, Dale Carnegie, the person who w- yeah. wrote uh, "How to Win Friends and Influence People," has a very similar sort of huckster story behind him yeah and a lot of these guys especially people who are peddling the secret you will see a unified theme Mm -hmm. um and part of that theme and i think it does tie in with the over idea so so law of attraction Mm -hmm. is the idea that thoughts become real that uh when you think there is a powerful vibrational energy that will call upon whatever it is you are thinking of. That doesn't just necessarily mean concrete thoughts. Mm -hmm. It also means, like, your vague emotional state. Yeah. But they they do go as far as to say, if you sit down and really think hard enough and visualize hard enough, whatever Mm -hmm. you think and visualize hard enough, over a long enough period of time will come to you. Absolutely. Now, as a basic idea, this makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense in as long as it just took me to 
say those words. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is all you need <laughs> mm-hmm. for the description of what that is. But the issue is, mm-hmm. to make money, mm-hmm. you need to make that description five and a half to 12 hours long. <laughs> Six cassette tapes. <laughs> for four easy payments of twenty nine nineteen ninety nine, 99 And so when it comes to uh, the law of attraction, the, the basic idea is when you think and have a positive attitude, uh, positive things will tend to happen to you. If you think and have a negative attitude, negative things will tend to happen to you. I'm going to get into why that would make sense in a certain vague context, not in the way that they are describing it. Mm-hmm. But... Go ahead and uh, continue talking about our friend Napoleon Hill. Following the exposure of his fraud in Alabama, <laughs> he fled to. Dude, dude, if you're getting if you're getting arrested for fraud in Alabama, that is such a that is a bare that's such an American thing. What? Fraud. He committed fraud. No, no, in not Alabama. only fraud. Lumber fraud. Lumber fraud. He committed Ooh. lumber fraud in Alabama should be. You know how states have mottos. Uh, yeah. The United States motto should be lumber fraud in Alabama. Lumber fraud in Alabama, baby. Lumber. It shouldn't be. Uh, that sounds like a song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a sick tune, like a sick Leonard Skinner. <laughs> lumber fraud in Alabama. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Go on. All right. So after <laughs> exposure was fraud in Alabama. He fled to Washington, D.C., where he dropped Oliver as his first name and began, I'm sorry, began going by Napoleon Hill. Awesome move. Absolutely. In 1909, he founded the Automobile College of Washington. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever heard anything so fake? (laughs) The Automobile College of Washington. (laughs) It is now known as, uh, what is it, UTI? (laughs) Now known as DeVry University. (laughs) They had a basketball team, by the way, DeVry. I know. I saw a very interesting documentary on that. Um, Incredible. Worst game ever. That's for another another, uh, episode. Mm -hmm. But the college assembled cars for the Carter Motor Corporation, Mm -hmm. which (laughs) which declared bankruptcy in early... uh, 1912, Which three years later. So crazy because he was using the law of attraction. So yeah. it makes you think how often he was thinking of bankruptcy. Yeah. He yeah, must yeah. have been thinking of it all the time. Absolutely. Go on. That's the way to go. Um, st- <laughs> students, of course, I add, were not paid for their labor. <laughs> Uh, during April during April 1912, the automobile magazine Motor World accused Hills Colleges of being a scam and derided its marketing material as a joke to anyone of average intelligence. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. A joke to anyone of average intelligence. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That is such a hard burn. Yeah. Damn. They were writing their asses off, dude. Yeah. Because that wasn't like... A guy writing for Times. That yeah. wasn't a guy writing for the New Yorker. That was a guy writing for what was the name? Motor of it? World. Motor. That's a that's a that's the thing you get for like free at the. Oh, damn. <laughs> keep, keep going. There's a little <laughs> Motor World. Motor World, dude. Um, following the bankruptcy of the Carter Motor Corporation, he pivoted the organization to teaching people how to sell cars rather than make them. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's of, of course. Mm-hmm. Students were incentivized to themselves sell automobile college of Washington courses I on which they would earn a commission. I know what's coming. No. Yep. In practice, the f- yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in practice, the focus was on signing more up more students, not in learning how to sell cars. Wow. Wait. Mm-hmm. So they built. A, they made a business where the idea isn't selling a product; mm-hmm. it's sort of selling the ability to sell that product as wow. its own product. Doesn't that That's sound like genius? Something? Doesn't that sound? Like I, something? I think it sounds smart. Wow. Yeah, go on there. It resembles a modern multi-level marketing oh, well, company. There you go. Oh well. That multi-level, well, so marketing is good, right? Yeah. Like marketing is a good thing. Marketing is good. Why wouldn't you want multiple levels of marketing at your company? It's like Uncle Ben, but like times (laughs) (laughs) more. Yeah, so so Napoleon Hill, uh, the person who wrote Think and Grow Rich, uh, clearly a bit of a a huckster, an old school shyster. He's doing 
lumber fraud in Alabama and him doing motor fraud. See, this is the kind of thing that I lament on, honestly, when it comes to this country, is what do people do now? They do, like, uh, EDD fraud. They Mm -hmm. do, uh, like, credit card scams and stuff like that. You used to be able to do lumber fraud and motor fraud this used yeah. to be a country you used to be able to sell a bridge you yeah, know now, what i mean now we're doing what the now we're doing wire fraud tutorials yeah. you know what i mean yeah we're doing methods we're you doing know what I mean? it's, it's, it's disgusting <laughs> but um so unfortunately i i guess uh napoleon hill did not consider uh in his law of attraction to attract a good reputation yeah he he really attracted a kind of bad reputation. You can say he was the YBN dev of his time. He, he <laughs> might have, be, and the people listening have no idea who that is. Look him um, up. Yeah, no, don't. Do <laughs> um, it's a it's a rapper who does a lot of fraud raps. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who actually you that actually is probably the modern iteration of Napoleon Hill. You're not you're not wrong there. Yeah. Um, so. The book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, just going back to like a personal story, I, I got into the law of attraction at uh, the time in my life when most people get into the law of attraction, which is my lowest, most depressed, most mentally ill. Absolutely. Right. So I I was in a really vulnerable place. Mm-hmm. And I, in the in a similar way, uh, it was right around the same time I got into pickup artist shit. I was getting into uh, law of attraction stuff. Okay. So, which those two worlds are vaguely connected in yeah, like yeah. A, a strange way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would sit down, and I remember this with the secret because the secret was kind of what got me out of it. Because when I watched the secret itself, I was like, it got you out of PUA. It, it got me out of everything. It got okay. me out of, like, PUA, and it got me out of, like, self-help stuff. Because I watched that movie, and I was like, nothing that represents me could be this poorly made. <laughs> yeah. Nothing that represents me as a human being could have this low of production value. Yeah. Did you actually fin- – we, uh, for the audience out there, we actually watched the movie yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And, and I think we got 40 minutes in. Well, I watched the whole thing when I was younger, but, I, dude, I realized, like, looking back on it, I used – I mean, I I am very wistful of this. I use my like young virility, like like mm-hmm. uh, you know when when you're eighteen years old, nineteen years old, and you just have this core of energy. Yeah. And I used that to study the dumbest bullshit in the entire world. Yeah. I used that to take meticulous notes on Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, yeah. I used that to. Uh, I think I transcribed the secret, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is so crazy. Like I took notes on the secret, wow. which is so crazy because the <laughs> book, the secret uh-huh. was made after the movie, the secret. Uh, yes. Well, uh, in fact. Yeah. And they, they essentially just transcribed the movie. So they did what I did, but they wow. just made a bunch of money off. Of it. Well, I mean, in your case, that doesn't sound too out of the ordinary right. because either you do that or become a libertarian. Yeah. Right. Which I, I had a stint of that as well. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you you said that you've tried manifesting before, too, right? Um. Well, in some aspects. Um. Or I'm sorry, law of attraction, using the law of attraction. Well, not really. Like um, back when I was at my lowest. Yeah. Would ble- it's sh- so oh, funny how it works like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. That's how it works. That's how they get you. Cole, I mean, we'll we'll save that because it's a magic bullet. Yeah, it goes. Yeah. Listen, uh, you think that your life is spiraling out of control. Um, mm-hmm. They they just nab you with this like very nebulous. Mm-hmm. Like potentially you could spin this into something that's actually good, Mm -hmm. but then every variation of like a text that is written about it that I have seen Mm -hmm. or someone who is talking about it Mm -hmm. is just a grift. Like I I really – I hope when this podcast comes out, it doesn't reach too many people whose lives were deeply positively affected by things like this Mm because I do want to leave room for the fact that if like the law of attraction got you out of a bad place in your life, Mm -hmm. great. You might not want to listen to this podcast. If you find it funny, if you find it silly, then huh. that's great because that's all it is. We, me, me and Terrence don't have it figured out either. Maybe you're right and we're like – you yeah, probably yeah. are right and we're wrong. Yeah. But in my experience with Law of Attraction stuff, it has almost always been a naked grift mm-hmm. a la your uh, like grifting preacher. 
Uh-huh. You're televangelist. It's mm-hmm. televangelism without Jesus. And some of it even no, 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 includes that's, Jesus. Actually, actually, I'm going to say this quick thing. Where the law of attraction comes from, it's basically part of the New Thought movement, which yeah. started in the late 19th century. Basically, it is, it's kind of like a second Christian awakening. Yes. Right? And there were notable people like Mary Eddie Baker. Mary oh Baker my, Eddie. Don't get me started on no. Christian science, dude. I used to work. Uh, I think you guys uh, know. I used to work at the Christian Science Center. Yeah. As security. Which is so funny. They're very nice people. Oh, they, absolutely. Ab- yeah. Here's the thing. that, And this is the thing with a lot of like religions is mm. the outcome of religion can be incredibly like negative. It can be good, too. Like, this, yeah. but, but the people are usually so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to I'm about to uh like go to Utah. I've been to Utah before and, mm-hmm. and when you tell people you're going to Utah, all they do is go like, Oh my god, the Mormons, the Mormons, the Mormons mm-hmm. and it's like at like sure and yeah. there's a lot of negative stuff that comes out of the Church of Latter day Saints. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I will also say when you go to Utah and you meet those people, it's like a lot of the times damn <laughs> They're super so people, sweet, <laughs> super people. <laughs> There's, even ex mor Here's how sweet Mormons are. Even yeah. ex Mormons are usually really sweet. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like I've met so many incredibly sweet, endearing ex Mormons, and just healthy looking. You they, know what I mean? All so healthy looking, like just Ubermenches. Just yeah. <laughs> no. That's um, Uber. I I knew a person who was an ex Mormon, and we mm-hmm. met at a gym, and they were uh, one of the most brolic looking people I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, they're usually fit. They also fit. do a lot of military defense. <laughs> is that true? That is true. A Mil- lot, what do you mean by military defense? A lot of Mormons are like high. Well, there's a lot of high ranking Mormons in the in, in the States DOD military. Yeah. military contracting. Interesting. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. Um, when you, when you look at like the sort of ethos of uh, strict regiment following and rule abiding and stuff like that. Yeah, but um. But, but um, just to yeah. swing there, as you said before, what this is, it's just kind of new, new age Protestant uh, Christianity, yes. but minus the Christian, minus the right. God. And so yeah. much stuff is like that because it's like I think a lot of us are sort of programmed in this way just because of the the American psychosphere, let's call it. Like yeah, yeah. The, I, I just I, I, uh, and I did learn that term. Is that from, from a true, true detective? detective. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I do think it is fun to use, and I'm very yeah. stupid, so I'm going to keep using it. As, mm-hmm. The American psychosphere. It's like there's Christianity sort of ingrained in the fabric of society here. Yeah. Whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, yeah, like, yeah. And I think there's a ton of very justified criticisms of that. Oh, yeah. But I think when you offer something that mm-hmm. is vaguely Christian. When you mm-hmm. offer something that has the same same trappings of the like church of of Christ, mm-hmm. it's gonna sell because people got turned off of Christianity, or a lot of people like mainstream America in some yeah. ways got turned off of Christianity. I mean, you go to the middle of America, it's very different, right? Right. But uh, a lot of mainstream America got turned off of Christianity, and there were these people who were like, "Well, we can fill, we can make so much money here, yeah. proposing a." "Quote unquote secular worldview mm-hmm. that actually, in its fabric, is deeply it's Christian. Deeply it Christian, almost yeah. takes yeah. the worst parts of Christianity in this way oh, yeah. Yeah. when it comes to the spiritual bypassing. Because mm-hmm. go ahead and read the uh, the the little rules. Just read a couple of those, okay? Uh, very quickly. I'll read the first. So these th- are this is from again uh, the Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich. Go ahead. Right. So number one, desire." Start with a strong desire or burning ambition to achieve a specific goal or outcome. Great. Okay. Actually, there was one. That, oh, faith. Have unwavering yep. faith in yourself and your ability to achieve, achieve your goal. And by the way, in the book, it goes much deeper into like how faith in God and stuff is important. And I'm going to skip to number 10. Yeah, go ahead. The mystery of sex transmutation. Oh, this is something I actually wanted to talk to you about. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Use the power of your sexual energy to fuel your desire and he, drive. He talks about, uh, and by the way, I, I did a super huge deep dive into... Uh, the word now is sublimation, okay. uh, but in sexual sublimation, which is the idea that you can revert sexual energy uh-huh. into uh, other parts of your life, which let's let's take a moment to go into that. I don't want to yeah. deviate because this is going to be its own episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is one of the things that really got me out of both 
the PUA stuff and the uh, what there there was this guy, this PUA guy, pickup artist guy, which uh, if very briefly, that's like a a guy who generally uh, are alt right mm-hmm. people who tell you how to pick up women, right? Mm-hmm. And he said, you know what you should do? You should hire the hottest secretary that you could possibly find. Mm-hmm. Which is so funny because no one listening to him has a secretary. Yeah. They are all people who, if at best, work a remote job for like, yeah. Nabisco yeah. or something. <laughs> but he's like, hire the hottest secretary. Don't have a male secretary. Yeah. Do not hire a male. Hire a woman, the hottest woman secretary you can find, yeah. and then challenge yourself to not try to fuck her. <laughs> And that you take that energy that you have from wanting to fuck your secretary and you use it on business. And it's like th- I, that I heard that and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm I don't know if how long I'm going to stay on this side of things because it was yeah. just so crazy. Like I, there's just so much. Well, yeah, go ahead. I think he's biting off the fact that have you since you're like you exercise. You ever heard that thing where, like, if you have, like, a woman next to you or, like, a woman on you while you, like, exercise or something, your testosterone goes? Wait, is that true? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never read the studies on that. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But yeah. I don't think it's going to—I don't think it's—I think if it made a huge difference, mm-hmm. there would be, uh, like— models in NFL training rooms at all times. If it actually worked, yeah, yeah. they would be using it at like the highest level of athletics. Yeah. Just so. Miami club girl pheromones. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, spray it. The Dolphins would be the best team every year if that was the case. Um but like like sexual stuff, this is a big thing Napoleon Hill uh, wrote about, and I, they, he actually has a subsequent writing. I can't remember the name right now, but I did read it, and it was all about like sublimation. So I did try it. I tried like essentially semen retention, which became very popular afterwards, like no fap and stuff. Yeah. What age were you? I was eighteen, nineteen. Oh man, prime man. And obviously, it was. Uh, not only did it not really work, it felt really bad Mm -hmm. i went like a little bit not not off the rails but like i felt like very repressed and stuff Mm -hmm. and then i i sort of had this coming to jesus moment where i was like wait a minute Mm -hmm. think about like the people who i really admire in whatever field i want to be like like acting and comedy and stuff like that Mm -hmm. they're having sex all the time like hyper successful people (laughs) It's not like this is the magical secret to every like there was a thing where boxers wouldn't have sex before fights. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, may, maybe you don't want to be doing like a strenuous physical activity before having sex like right. that may, or before uh, f- like yeah. fighting another guy. Yeah. But <laughs> like, all the other stuff, it's like, oh, wait, this doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah I, yeah. yeah, I stopped doing it. <laughs> you got to be a hungry wolf before the fight. Yeah, that'd be a hungry. It's just slapping him. <laughs> that is so funny to be like, you know, part of man, uh, part of the uh, law of attraction is do not come ever. <laughs> what? Ever. A, what a bad law. <laughs> um, w- w- let's go. Let's go to the next quote because I, I want to. I do want to get into the secret real quick. So uh, that was that was Napoleon Hill. Those were just some of his rules. It was the 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 whole idea of it is this sort of broad explanation of what the secret gets a little bit more specific about, yeah. which is. Thoughts are things. Right. And this book by Napoleon Hill, uh, well, by Napoleon, it directly inspired The Secret. Is that true? Did it, did yeah. it talk about yeah. that in The Secret? Yeah. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and hit quote number one there. Quote number one. Have you ever started to think about something you are not happy about? The more you thought about it, the worse it seemed. That's because you think one sustained thought the law of attraction immediately brings more like thoughts to you. In a matter of minutes, you have gotten so many um, like, un- well, unhappy no, thoughts. No, it's written poorly, Terrence. <laughs> Don't worry. That is actually what it is. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought I was bucking. No, no, no. Go ahead. But um, so many unhappy thoughts coming to you that the situation seems to be getting worse. The more you think about it, the more upset you get. Now, this directly contradicts another thing that it says in the book, which is that the secret takes a lot of time. Yeah. Like, the, it doesn't happen immediately, and then it immediately goes, it does happen immediately. <laughs> so, let's let's backtrack a little bit, because we watched the movie, which is the same as the book, um, mm-hmm. except you get to see the people who are uh, doing the secret, right? Yeah. You get to see them with your own eyes. 
And Mm -hmm. let me just say, I have never seen a group of people assembled that are less trustworthy than the people. It's every kind of untrustworthy person. It's the the, uh, older white guy who's trying way too hard to seem smart. Yeah. It's the... uh, it's the like kind of middle aged white woman who wears a little bit too many beads. Yeah. It's the like uh black dude with dreadlocks. Super who, tight dreads. Super, super tight super dreads. Tight. Yeah, dreads too tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Stevie Wonder dreads. <laughs> Stevie Wonder like eighty seven. Who who is like like uh giving this presentation of austerity to this level of just like not even saying words anymore yeah uh some self-proclaimed philosophers who yes. are just they no, just... they're all philosophers yeah, yeah every single one of them is philosophers and actually the weirdest two le- i believe legit uh quantum physicists well yes and no there mm-hmm. was like a whole disparaging of the quantum physics uh proposition of the secret right so right i don't i don't know how trustworthy that really is but i mean but quantum itself it's a it's a it's a theoretical physics so so it's not based totally in fact yeah you know what i mean and it makes sense it's theoretical yeah so it makes sense that they would get into this like kind of sort of scientific thing what the movie you would think again and i'm just going off of what they're saying i'm not trying to be I'm, not, I'm truly not trying to be mean, yeah. but I'm just going off of what they're saying, which is the things that you think are what you attract, yeah. right? So what you put out into the world, it will come back to you, and you can use that to your advantage. If that were the case, couldn't they raise more money to have something more than B-roll playing? Yeah. While the, like, yeah. the B-roll that is playing during this movie is like local infomercial level yeah 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 and uh, you remember the uh the rock joke where he had the, the not the oh joke not a joke God. but Ta- yeah. talk about the rock that yeah so so let me set this up real quick because i mm-hmm. do remember this very well mm-hmm. there's a guy who again this is such a good summation of the film which is a basically decent idea mm-hmm. taken to its lengths mm-hmm which become insane yeah so it's a basically good idea that because of the the funnel of these people in this movie Mm -hmm. goes into a level of insanity go ahead terrence yeah so the guy i don't know his name but he's a self-help guy apparently he tells a story about how he walked I think at a coffee shop, probably a detox place, <laughs> you know, a methadone just, clinic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like the healthy detox oh, where yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I got a fruit, ju- you know, sure. juice bar or something. No one there is ever happy, by the way. Right. I, I go to one. I go to one for coffee and sometimes I will get like a shot. And whenever I go there, I'm less incentivized to go every time because <laughs> no one there is happy. And it's like, so what are we doing here, folks? You know, you know who's happy? The people at the taco stand across the street. Let's just go there. <laughs> People at the Del Taco. They're what killing. are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so but I think he's at a coffee shop, um, and I I think he got a rock and it dropped. And th- 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 please, if I'm wrong, no. I, so so he got a rock, and his idea was, um, I'm going every time I touch this rock, I am going to think of something to be grateful for. Okay, I'm going to feel gratitude. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. Okay. So I think uh, he was going to a coffee place, boop, 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 and... No, no, a guy, a guy from South... So, so he meets a guy from South Africa, and the guy from South Africa... He tells this guy from South Africa about The Rock, and he's <laughs> like, whenever I touch The Rock, uh, I'm grateful for something. And the guy from South Africa is like, oh, that's cool. And then he gets... Which, by the way, this story isn't true. Right, um, right. This right. is one of the many stories in self-help books that just clearly isn't true. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so the guy from South Africa writes him and goes... I uh, I need some of your gratitude stones. My son is dying of malaria. Of, or, of or, hepatitis. 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 It was a hepatitis? It was hepatitis. I forget what it was. Yeah. Um, my son is dying from hepatitis. Uh, I need one of your uh, gratitude rocks. And the guy was like, well, he, it was just a rock. So I went to the local river, and I packaged a, bunk of, a bunch of rocks, and I sent it. And it's like, that is 
so mean. Yeah. So insulting to South just Africans. tell him, hey, man, The Rock is just a reminder. Uh, yeah. Don't try to, like, trick this guy no. into what... So he sends the guy three rocks, doesn't send him any money for yeah. the hepatitis... For hepatitis, a well-known condition. <laughs> there's Should like have just four, given him some money. There's like four types of hepatitis, and three of them are curable. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the guy writes back, and he's like, thank you. We started selling gratitude stones, and we made like... A so it's like, so the guy knew no. that they were just rocks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what... It's just such... There's so many holes in this story. But he's yeah. like, we started selling uh, gratitude stones for $10 a, a piece... Wow. And this this the place this guy is, which is South Africa, is being painted as this like incredibly destitute area. And it's like, oh, but you're selling rocks for ten dollars a pop. It's like no. the one no. thriving part of this infrastructure that you're painting is like basically an Etsy. <laughs> you're selling rocks for ten dollars, but yeah. Yeah. The, the, it, the, there's just like so many an- anecdotes in the story where it's like when you when you read about the law of attraction in its most basic form you start to go oh that makes sense yeah okay like cool that makes sense and then when you actually see it like molded into books and writings and stuff like that that's when you go oh man this is all really bad for like a number of reasons as well in fact i i want you to uh skip real close uh, real quickly to um uh, quote number three. All right. <laughs> this is uh, Jack Canfield, the writer of uh, Chicken <laughs> Soup for the Soul. Chicken Soup for the Soul. I love those books, by the way. Absolutely. They're great yeah. books. Go ahead. But quote three from Jack Canfield, the anti-war movement creates more war. You know, I, you know sometimes you just have the urge to say something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're in a conversation. You know, you're somewhere, you're, you're trying to make an impression, and you're like, man, I have to say something. And then you say something, and then you're like, wow. Oh, man. man I shouldn't that, ever say anything ever again. That really fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. With the way these people are talking and, like, the nonsensical nature of a lot of the stuff that they're saying, mm-hmm. that does make sense yeah. with the theory but it is also a proof, a, a like proof that the theory is wrong. Yeah. It makes no sense to go. The anti-war movement creates more war. Yeah. You know what he didn't, which he should have, because he yeah. was giving a bunch of uh, examples of the anti-blank movement causes blank. Okay. What about the anti-racist movement? It causes racism. Causes racism. <laughs> That's like a hyper right wing talking point. Uh, yeah, you know yeah. who was part of the anti racist movement? Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. was the, that was anti racism. Yeah. That is like, what are, what are we talking about here? Gandhi was part of the anti war movement. Yeah. This is like a Steven Seagal <laughs> quote. <laughs> this is something Steven oh, Seagal. Man. Would say. The anti war movement creates more war. Yeah. Yeah. Or John Lennon, just someone like dumb. <laughs> and this is this gets into a point that I wanted to make about this. So this form of thinking, which is actually very popular, like incredibly popular, especially amongst uh, a lot of members of the baby boomer generation and yeah. uh, subsequent generations after them, like that age range of I feel like like forty to sixty, mm-hmm. um, and this is just speculation, but I do hear it a lot from them. Like the live laugh love generation, the uh, yeah. there's a lot of this thinking, and a lot of you might be saying as you're listening to me, like you may think that what I'm talking about is inherently negative, and I'm gonna give you my explanation of why I think this way and why I actually don't think it's negative. I actually think it's negative to think this way. If you start thinking that negative thoughts cause negative things, then by that uh, assertion, every negative thing in your life was caused by you. Okay. I do think that taking responsibility for certain things in your life is a good thing. I think Mm -hmm. ownership is a good thing. There's a big leap between that and you literally caused every bad thing in your life with your negative thoughts. With your wave energy, dude. With your wave energy. You, your you, brain you, wave energy. You crystalled your way into yeah. this shitty life that you have, and it's yeah. your fault. And if you don't get yourself out of it, it that's on you. Yeah. What it also does is it uh, – you know the, the process of monocropping? Have you uh, ever heard of that? 
I haven't. So uh, there's this thing where for uh, like a land to be prosperous, you need to have a like a number of different kinds of uh, things growing there. Okay, for an sure. ecosystem to be prosperous, there needs to be a bunch of different things there, right? Mm -hmm. For for uh, for the allowance of like the ecosystem to thrive. Monocropping is this process where you only have you only grow one kind of thing in one area, and you do that for so long it ruins the natural ecosystem of that area. Gotcha. Yeah, That's how I see exclusive positive thinking. Yeah. If yeah. you are exclusively using quote unquote positive thoughts all the time, just positive, huh? mm -hmm. you ruin your personality. Yeah. Not just yeah. that, you also are like infringing upon your ability to express yourself because it, it, by that metric no. if i'm feeling if i wake up one morning which this happens to me man i wake up and i'm like fuck i feel bad mm -hmm. like, i just feel shitty this sucks like i you know what i do in that situation i call my buddy killy and i'm like dude i feel like ass and he'll go yeah I, I, you know I, i've been feeling kind of bad too like my my stomach's acting up and bad. i'm like shut up killy. <laughs> but <laughs> i tell him to hang up <laughs> yeah, we, we talk you talk about it and you realize like Okay, yeah, like this is this is bad. It's gonna pass. It is what it is. Yeah. Like that, th that's a bad day. At least I'm not killing. You now know, imagine, cool. imagine a world where I wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel bad. I can't feel bad. I mm -hmm. can't feel bad because now I'm gonna attract bad things in my life. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh no, I can't feel bad. You know what? I'll, I'll feel good. You know what? <laughs> I feel good. I feel uh, good yeah. today. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's this psychotic. No, not I. Uh, well, it, it's this very misplaced. Yeah. Uh, notion that you should always feel good all the time. No, it, you shouldn't. That's not being a human being. Right, right. And this, I think, really taking this to the core, it only produces two type of people. <laughs> to complete psychopaths and M NPCs. Like like yeah, you said, dude. personality to this, like just wet blank. Describe to the people what an NPC is. So, I mean, this is a nebulous term, but it's basically a normie. Someone mm. with the most butter butter and toast normie opinions. isn't even i i don't even mind i don't even mind a normie the, this sort of is more uh more ref, more like restricted than even a right, normie right right yeah yeah right, right. no cuz i've I, I mean in my life and i'm i'm sure a lot of people listening right now have had experiences with other people who have followed this sort of trend of thinking right like, yeah i dated a woman who was very much a uh Law of attraction, manifest, everything everything's positive. I just think positively all the time. And then yeah. you go to one of those people with your problem. Mm -hmm. You go to one of those people when you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Get ready to not feel better at the end of it. You know why? <laughs> it's a new form of spiritual bypassing that doesn't require Christianity but has all the trappings of Christian or or I mean any theism. It like Yeah, yeah. And yeah. by the way, I do think that there's a a way to practice theology that doesn't involve spiritual bypassing. Like, I think there is a positive way of doing it. I've, I've seen it from a lot of my friends who are like very religious where they don't use religion as a cop out to not experience a full range of emotions. No. But dude, you go to someone who's like, uh, like, a like the, the not, and honestly, not even all people who do law of attraction stuff. Like some of them are good people. I, yeah. I have no problem in it, I'm just talking about the people who are selling it and like grifting it. Yeah. You go to one of them with your problems. You're like, oh man, I'm feeling bad today. They're like, oh, don't, <laughs> just don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> just don't feel bad. Hey, if you've ever gone to a person who's like a all positive vibes all the time kind of person with your issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are not gonna feel better at the end of that conversation. Yeah, yeah. The opposite of that is just a it be like that sometimes type. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, right, right, it, right. It be like that, bro. Sometimes it be like that does make me feel a little better though. Yeah, we in the trenches for real, bro. And then the next stage is it's so when when it comes to uh, Terrence's philosophy of feeling better, does it start with? It be like that, and then it transitions to thug it out. Uh yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. That's about where it goes. Just keep pushing forward. Like in recent years, I've been reading a lot of like, um, like historical, uh, media. Yeah. Right. Reading a lot of old books. I've been getting into like reading, f you know, famous philosophers, Nietzsche, Hegel, stuff like that. And a cent. I mean, they're smart and they got a bunch of concepts, but. As far as motivate, as far as what 
their motivation, what they'd say to you, it'd just be like, shit's tough. Just, <laughs> yeah. You got to thug that shit out, No, bro. a lot of that is, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of the a lot of the old philosophers are like that. And uh, lest you think I am being too harsh on the secret, I would propose to you that by the end of this quote from the secret, you will understand what I'm talking about. I want you to go ahead and read quote four. It's a bit of a long quote. <laughs> But it's worth it. Terrence, I want you to read it all the way through. I'm not going to interrupt you. I want you all to know this is pulled directly from the book. I did not alter it in any way. Uh, Go ahead, Terrence. (laughs) All right. Quote four. Robert was gay. (laughs) He outlined all the grim realities of his life in his emails to me. uh, In his job, his coworkers ganged up on him. It was constantly stressful because of how nasty they were with him. Um, when he walked down the street, he was accosted by homophobic people who wanted to abuse him in any in some way. Um, he wanted to become a stand-up comedian, and when he did stand-up comedy, everyone heckled him about being gay. His whole life was one of the was one of unhappiness and misery, and it all focused around being attacked because he was gay. I began to teach him that he was focusing on what he did not want. I directed him back to his email that he sent to me and said, read it again. Look at all the things that you do not want that you're telling me about. I can tell you're very passionate about this, and when you focus on something with a lot of passion, it makes it, ha- it, makes it happen even faster. Uh, let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. Robert homophobia is your fault absolutely your bad vibes robert your bad vibes are causing the people in your community to be homophobic against you your brainwave energy (laughs) and mind you this is not a uncommon opinion within these circles when these ideas are taken to their highest level it is literally the highest degree of victim blaming you can possibly do there's no there the story goes on and there's never a accountability taken for the people who are being homophobic yeah. to him. Remember? There's also where does he live? Like Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, uh, Robert, I'm sorry you live in Methuen, Massachusetts. <laughs> 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 no, Methuen's in life. Lawrence. Methu- Lawrence, yeah, <laughs> Lawrence. Lawrence for sure, dude. But um yeah, well, <laughs> Methuen nice. It's it's yeah it's pretty nice. Okay, I it's, I don't I've never nice. been. I just tried to pull a random part of Massachusetts. I was about to say for the audience, this is the Mer- this is part of the Merrimack Valley, yeah. um, hit hard by the opioid epidemic. But we're not going to talk about that next episode. Lynn, I should have said Lynn. Yeah, I should have said Lynn. Lynn, Lynn or Lowell. Lowell. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry you live in Lowell, Robert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robert, move from Lowell, please. Do man. <laughs> Um, so this is the assessment of Robert's situation from this philosophy is Robert is clearly, uh, a gay man who has experienced a high level of homophobia Yeah, and the advice given to him is not to try to get away from situations where people are, which by the way, the fact that he is being confronted with this level of homophobia tells me he is in an incredibly like homophobic (laughs) part of the country. Or, or, or I think this story's not, well, either it's not real or. Yeah, per- right, right. Or, it could, it could very well have been made up by the person telling it. Or the Robert, person themselves, yeah. their perceptions were crazy. Because. Um, no, no, you're, you're right. Ro- they probably made Robert up. Well, or, or just Robert was just in a bad space and he just felt that he was getting persecuted but when he i guess when he got positive thought remember the movie remember the movie when he was like he got all the positive thoughts and he did the stand-up and he was like guys i'm very gay and then thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. all right oh, thank yeah. you guys the, the example in the movie of uh of robert's ascent to stand-up comedy is like they show him on stage after he uses the secret and he goes so I'm very gay. And the crowd goes, yeah. That shit works. But if you're getting, I mean, I I really, I think that uh, the first option is probably correct. This is probably like a made up story because Robert afterwards is like, yeah, I guess no one uh, is persecuting me at all. I'm like, yeah, because from the story that it's told, this isn't Robert being like, oh, yeah, I'm getting like bad vibes from my coworker. They're like. Mm-hmm. leaving bananas on his chair for him to sit on and stuff in yeah. the movie. Like, this is not benign, like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't homophobia. This yeah. is, like, 
he is experiencing straight up yeah. like homophobic heckles. But through the law of attraction, see, because yeah. you're th- Terrence, you're thinking of this too sanely. Okay, you're you're thinking of this too sanely. Me? This is I'm not. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, you, this is how bad the secret is. Uh-huh. Is you are uh, coming at it from too <laughs> even keeled an approach. The reality of this is mm. the teller of the story and in the story, Robert, which again I don't think exists, is going. When you put out positive vibrations, people around you will literally change their behaviors, mm-hmm. and will take ho- it will take homophobic people and literally make them either change their jobs or to stop bothering you altogether. Yeah. That's what will happen when you start using positive vibrations. Yeah, or or I want to do another thing. Or like, and Robert was just a bad person, and it was like, yeah, people don't like me at my jobs. Yeah, because you brought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Robert just, like, <laughs> Robert's tipping over people's desks. Yeah, he's just... <laughs> he's going on stage and being like, get these immigrants out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Robert, stop it. <laughs> he's just saying the worst thing about women <laughs> because he just doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't understand. <laughs> you know like, how oh, Tim this... Dillon, yeah, he's just mean yeah, to Yeah, it's just Tim Dillon. It was Tim. Yeah. <laughs> unaware Tim Dillon being yeah. like, God, these people are being so homophobic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, either Shout way, I'm so glad that uh, I'm so glad that Robert was able to cure uh, homophobia with positive thinking mm. and not, you know, systemic structural change. Mm. Uh, which, by the way, uh, going full circle, one of the things it says in the secret is. Only one percent of the world understands the secret. Is it is it any surprise that one percent of the population owns such a big proportion of the wealth? And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, that's why. Yeah. Oh, it's not because you know capitalism completely unregulated has horrible, horrible side effects. No, mm-hmm. no, it's that people aren't using the secret enough. <laughs> People people don't want it enough. People don't want it enough. That's what one percent. Yeah, if you ju- if you just pulled yourself up by your bootstraps mm-hmm. and you stopped being poor, mm-hmm. then finally the world would be good, and there wouldn't be all these gross poor people walking around. That's right. If you were only com- as comfortable as me doing wire fraud, then <laughs> maybe you'd be somewhere. If you had as little scruples as Terrence, <laughs> and you were able to, you know. Uh, reverse VPN an old woman and find her login and then <laughs> run up her credit card <laughs> on uh, temu.com, then you wouldn't be in this mess that you found yourself in. Um, let's quickly uh, let's quickly do our assessment and then we're going to go into uh, the Patreon. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you uh, want to join the Patreon, it's uh, $5 a month and you get the extended version of every episode that we do where mm-hmm. we go a little bit deeper into the readings and uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, if not, we're still going to do the ending of this episode. So mm-hmm. my assessment of the law of attraction is the very basics watered down mm-hmm. is fine. Mm-hmm. I think I, I have a pretty positive worldview. Mm-hmm. I, I and I do think that like having a generally positive worldview will help you be a little bit happier. Will help mm-hmm. you at least maybe think a little bit smaller and not consider all of like the dread of reality. You can kind of just live in your own world and do the best you can with the life you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking it to this extreme is going to cause a lot of self blaming and uh, the to me the biggest negative takeaway of this book is that it's saying neuter your emotions. Yeah. Take your negative emotions and shove them away. We don't want to hear them. That's it. Yeah, that's all. What's your assessment? What did you say? Well, my assessment is, I mean, pretty much the same thing. I actually do want to mention that if you're interested in reading this, I think it's better to read the people that came out of the Christian movement. Because even if if you're... You, whether or not you're Christian, I think those are interesting stories. This stuff. You, are you talking like Saint Thomas Aquinas and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, just just like the stuff from the be- from the beginning of the movement, from the beginning of the New Thought movement, when it was still tied to Christianity. Oh, and, and, like, and who who would that who would that be? Um, <laughs> I don't want I, you know what. Don't listen to Terrence's recommendations. Well, well, no, no, no. It's it's these are just good stories, and it kind of gives you context to the time if you're into history and whatnot. Um, but this stuff, this is just word uh, salad. So, this... 
Terrence, yeah. just to to end this on, you just gave a reading recommendation of a book that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what I do, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. But um yeah, it's it's this stuff sucks. This stuff is bad. <laughs> there that, we that's go. my ass- <laughs> There we go. I was trying to be smart, but Yeah, you were trying to be smart. What what did we say about that? Uh, it you know, it never works out. 20% of the time. 20% it works. of the time. Uh, yeah. Uh thank you all so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Please join the Patreon and as always, have a good one. Have a good one, guys.